Good day students. So today we're going to be going through our linear programming, linear programming using Excel QF, right? Or Excel Solve, right? So we'll be doing linear programming. So linear programming, we'll be going through some of, some of its examples, right? So from this point onwards, like I assume you already gone over how to do it in class, right? And what is it used for and those things, right? So here, right, I'll just be going through some examples, right? Then I'll show you how to solve them using Excel QM, right? So first, I want us to take the sniping tool, right? Let's just start with example one. And then I copy this into work, right? So I'm just looking for somewhere where I can type my objective, right? So the first important thing when you're formulating a linear programming model, right? So the first thing that you have to do, you have to identify, you have to identify the number of variables that you are dealing with, right? And then secondly, you have to identify your objective function right so objective function goes to answer what you are trying to achieve right so are you trying to minimize cost or maximize profit right and then secondly you have to now to formulate your constraints your constraints right so one particular constraint so yeah, there are different kinds of constraints, right? Depending on a linear programming model, but the constraint that you should not always forget is the non-negativity constraint. Non-negativity constraint, right? So non-negativity, right? It refers to like, for example, if we are dealing with real world problems, like maybe let's say we are trying to maybe determine the most optimum energy mix of a product, right? We sort of like, like energy, like that can be used, it can be negative, right? So in your constraint, you have to clearly state out that whatever, let's say you are dealing with solar and coal generated power, right? Negative energy, right? You can use, the energy can be negative because you are going to use it right so something like that or let's say you have raw materials and right? you are and you are trying to make a product right and you are trying to determine the most like optimal mix for what you should use the raw materials for right you can't get a negative value on those raw materials like right? there's no negative raw materials right so yeah i hope that was clear right and then from then on after i formulated your constraint right now you can formulate your your lp model in qm right so now without wasting time right so we're gonna do ex example number one right so as i said the first step is for you to define your variables right so here the example reads as ford produces a car and a truck at its roslin at its roslin plant each truck contributes contributes a uh, hundred thousand and each car contributes fifty thousand to profit right the resources required to make a car and a truck are shown below right so these are the raw raw resources that are required to use for making manufacturing the car so there's machine this type one machine this type two machine and they also have a material constraint or steel right so for example, like it takes the car two tons of steel and takes the truck three, three tons of steel to, to manufacture, right? And then they're saying Ford has 30 type one machines that operate 20 days a month and has 20 type two machines that operate type 20 days a month, right? And then they're saying the company has 360 tons of steel available and then marketing dictates that at least 90 percent of the at least 90 cars should be 90 cars and at least 
27 tracks should be produced, right? So, and then they're saying from leaked the LP model for this for this problem, right? So, as you can probably read right from this statement, right? They are talking about a car and a truck, right? So, they are looking at the resources that are required to manufacture a car and a truck, right? So, now I can see that we are dealing with two variables right here. So, now I'm going to name my variables. Maybe I'm going to let X1 be my car, right? And then my X2, right? I'm going to make it to be my truck. Right. And then now I have to formulate the objective function. Right. So first, first step in formulating objective function, then we have to determine whether they are minimizing or maximizing profit. Right. So here they are saying, right, if you read the statement that they're saying for produce a car, it is frozen car plant, which contributes a hundred thousand, the truck contributes a hundred thousand, the car contributes fifty thousand to profit, right? So they are trying to determine the most optimum number of cars to produce, right? Like with regards to how much profit can it generate for them. So now I can identify an objective function as they're trying to maximize, right? They're trying to maximize, right? So my now I can write my objective function as so objective function is written in terms of cost, right? So now if they if they maximize their profit or they're focused on the maximization of their profit, right? So now your car it's gonna contribute fifty percent, fifty thousand, right? So it's gonna be fifty thousand multiplied by the number of cars that they're gonna the multiply by the number of cars that they're gonna want to produce right and then so now let's say they produce they produce maybe they choose to produce maybe two cars so for the, this is the cars of profit or for objective function side right so if they choose to produce two cars right which means they're gonna make hundred thousand in profit so now we also have to factor in the truck which generates a hundred thousand in profit right so this is hundred that's two so now this is our objective function right and then now we have to formulate our constraint right so now so now our constraint right so if you further read this, this statement they're saying the resources required to manufacture a car and a truck are shown below right so for a car so this information is represented for type one machine type two machine and and the tons of steel right so now if you look at the car a car to be to be manufactured it requires 0 0.8 days right and then a truck it requires one day right on type one machine right but then if you look at the here they are saying Ford has type one machine that operate 20 days a month right so now you formulate your first constraint i can call this constraint my maybe my type one type one machine constraint right so my type one machine constraint is going to be given by So I'm just going to highlight this. Okay, yeah, that's okay. So my type 1 machine date, it's given by that the car, the car re requires 0 0.8, 0 0.8 days on machine 1, and then it requires, the the truck requires one day on machine 1. So I can just omit that one and write this as x2 right and then now we have to decide on our constraint right so now they are saying oh with regard to type one they're saying for this 30 type one machines that operate 20 days a month right which means 
these machines can exceed that 20 day operation right so but now since 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 the machine operates 20 days and we have 30 of them right how we're gonna get our our constraint now it's gonna be it should be less than or equals to so now since we can't exceed this 20 days of operation right since the machine is only available for 20 days right when i say straight out equals to 20 right but you should factor in that they have 30 of them right which means that each and every car can go into either one of these machines right so now we have to factor in all of the machines right so we're gonna multiply we're gonna multiply this by by the 30 number of machines right which should give us 600 right so now that's our type 1 machine right and then we move on to our type 2 machine right so for our type 2 type 2 machine constraint right so i'm just gonna write type 2 right and then for our type 2 machine so the car requires 0 0.6 days on machine 1 right plus the truck requires 0 0.7 0 0.7 days right on machine 2 right so now similar case right they're saying type 2 machine like there's 20 type 2 machines that can operate for 20 days a month right so they can't exceed this 20 days right so wait sorry let me just verify something so so sorry this is this inequality sign right it's supposed to be less than or equals to right and then because we can't exceed the 20 days right and then even this one right since we have 20 type 2 machines that can operate 20 days a month right so they can't exceed that 20 days right so our constraint gonna be have to be less than or equals to so now they have i can the machine operates for 20 days right but since they have since they have 20 of them right it means that each machine can like so the machines can be used simultaneous right which means like the days or can i put this so which means that like now since the machine can operate 20 days a month right but there are 20 machines right we have to account for the 20 machines right so we multiply this by 20 by 20 which will get like 400 i think right and then that's it with our second constraint right so now we have to the material constraint right or material constraint so the steel that they have right so now here they are saying like for to produce a car right it requires two tons of steel and to produce the truck it requires three tons of steel right so for a car it's gonna be two x1 plus so for a truck a truck requires three tons of steel right so it's gonna be three x2 right but they're saying the company has 360 tons of steel available so whatever number of cars that they produce here right it can't exceed the 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 available steel can't be exceeded right because they wanna if you exceed that steel that you have right you're gonna require more steel right so we can't exceed this trend is which means like whatever cars and trucks like that are gonna be produced their steel requirement shouldn't be exceed the trend and so which means your question should be less than or equals to right and then now they are saying marketing dictates that at least 90 cars should be produced right so and then they're saying and at least 27 trucks should be produced right so now marketing also enforces a constraint right or a requirement or a cap right so this is gonna call this the marketing constraints right so the marketing the marketing constraints right they are both accounting for 
the cars and the trucks right so again so they're saying the the trucks they should produce at least 90 trucks which means they should produce greater greater or equals to 90 trucks 90 90 cars sorry right 90 cars right and then the second requirement that is placed by marketing is that they should produce at least more at least at, at least 27,000 they should produce more or equals to 27 trucks right and then now our last constraint right i talked about it when we're starting it's gonna be our non negativity constraint right so our non negativity constraints our non negativity constraints right so now our non negativity constraints like it speaks to since they are producing our cars right they're talking about like producing cars that maximize profit right so or since it's real we can't have for example we can't have negative cars or negative yeah something like that so now what's gonna happen is that now we're gonna define our non-negativity constraints right so now our first non-negativity constraint Our non-negativity constraint, right? It's gonna indicate that the cars that are produced, they can be, they should be greater or equals to zero, right? As well as the trucks that are produced, they should be greater or equals to zero, right? So now we are done with our constraint, right? Double check. So yeah, we are done with our constraints, right? So now we're gonna go to QM where we'll yeah so now we're gonna go to our QM right so if I can just move to my QM so there's version four and version five, they both work, but in this video, I'm gonna use version five or for Windows five, right? So now this is our QM, right? You wanna get something like this, right? So since we're doing linear programming on this side, we're gonna, we get, we get a, a set of different modules on the side, right? But since we are dealing with linear programming, right you can just come here so yeah so me sometimes some of you will get something like this right so you just look for linear programming right which is here right so you select on linear programming right so you'll get something like this right here this is where you'll choose to what you name your course so like here initial like the default setting cell is, is saying they're going to name the constraint as constraint one two three and so forth or a b c d whatnot right but that doesn't matter much because we're gonna rename them anyway right and then here they are saying the number of constraints right and then the number of variables right so if we go back here right you can see that our variables are to define there's only two variables right so we we can just leave this at two right but if there's more than two variables you can increase or decrease so however you see fit right the number of constraints right so when i come come back here right check our number of constraints so we have the this may constrain this one this one this one this one and this one and this one so our type one machine constraint type two machine constraint material constraint marketing constraints non-negativity constraints right so in total we have one two three four five six seven constraints right so now here when you come back here right again so we're gonna increase you can just increase like this or you can just manually type seven right doesn't matter it works either way right so after you properly put in the number of constraints number of variables you can just press okay right and then you get something like this right so here in the first row this row that's written maximize right it's 
accounting for your where you write objective function right and if you still notice right you, you can change your objective here so if now i see that like maybe i made a mistake i selected maximize then just go to here right and now you can see my objective functions on minimize right but in this case since we are maximizing we're gonna go back to maximize right and then we gonna write our we're gonna write our our objective functions and our constraint now right? so now here right so if you look at this column right there's x1 there's x2 right you don't have to name them since you already know what's your x1 what's your x2 right so now for example like now our x1 is our cars right and then our x our x2 is gonna be our our x2 is gonna be our track right so here we're only concerned about writing the values under the the right column right so for example in this row the, in this row, this is where you write the objective function. So x1, right? So they automatically multiply if you write the like those variables here, right? So now if you if you still remember objective function here, right? It's saying fifty thousand of x1, right? So which means fifty thousand to that that's how much profit that the the car like the car produces, right? And then for the track it's gonna be a hundred thousand, right? So under X3 when I write it hundred thousand. So now you can also expand this column, right? If you want to see proper, right? And then so now you can see our objective function is properly retained, right? So our objective function is fifty thousand x one, hundred thousand x two, right? And then now we now start to write our constraints right so our first constraint right with the our type one machine constraint right so which is written as for so i can just label this as type one machine right so i can just write type one machine here right so this like you naming or titling your constraint it helps someone who's analyzing them to identify which constraint are you talking about right so our first constraint right so for our type one machine constraint right as is, like i explained like from when i was formulating this constraint so to produce that car it takes 0 0.8 days and to produce the track it takes one day right which means here like for type one machine under car which is x1 right when i write 0 0.8 right and then to factor in the to factor in the the one it takes one day right so you're gonna just write one right and then now you're gonna like fix your sign right in this case our sign was less than or equals to right so here it's where you can change your sign so if you just press on this drop down right so you can see now that i can change my sign right and then so now since our sign was less or equal to so we're just gonna stick to this right and then now it was greater or equals to 600 right so now as you can see also under equation form you can verify that the that constraint is written correctly right and then now we move to our second constraint right our type 2 machine constraint right so our type 2 machine constraint for the car it takes 0 0.6 days on on type 2 machine and then it takes 0 0.7 days on x2 machine right so yeah that's correct so now just come back here right and then you name your constraint as type type 2 machine right and then so this takes let me just double check again takes 0 0.7 right and then takes 0 0.6 right takes 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 sorry so this is 0 0.6 it's gonna be our 0 0.6 this side and then this side is gonna be our 0 0.7 for
sure error I'm pressing the cover I'm not sure about like if the software is different but the PC I'm using like it's using it's following it's giving me it requires me to use points or dots right for as a decimal form right so like in your case you might require a comma but sometimes like maybe like first assume that requires a for you to use a full stop as a decimal point and then if it doesn't work then you move to the comma right and then now and then now like they say the sign was greater it was less or equals to so now come here verify our sign which is less or equals to but then again if it was greater or equals to you can change it here but in this case when we're changing it was greater less or equals to 400 right so now we can verify that our second constraint for type 2 machine is written correctly right and then now our material constraint is gonna be the car to produce requires two tons and then the, the track requires three tons and we have a limit of 360 tons of steel available right so we're gonna come here again we're gonna say this is our material constraint right so we're just gonna write Our material so our car requires two tons of steel and our truck requires three tons of steel and then we can't exceed the available steel that we have which is 360 tons right and then now we move on to this constraint right so now the marketing constraint right so for x1 right they just said x1 can exceed 90 right so like in normal algebra right there's one x1 right but like you already know like as in math we omit that one we just write something like as x or x1 in this case x1 right so here they are saying our cars can exceed can exceed 90 right cars that are put sorry the cars that are produced like they have to be wait so let me check again they are saying like at least 90 cars should be produced right which means the number of cars produced in a man should exceed or be equals to the 90 right so in this case we're gonna go back here so now since like the, our constraint is only on the car right which is our x1 right and as i just explained like the the one thing right you're gonna write one here right so as you can see now it's only focusing on the it's only focusing on the what's this on the car and then this one you're gonna leave it as at zero right so our constraint is gonna be great you're gonna now select the constraint of greater equals to 90 right so now since we are they didn't in our constraint they didn't they didn't mention anything about the what you call about the track right we want to leave this as zero right and then move on to us so this is our first marketing constraint so this is marketing marketing constraint one constraint one right and then you wanna and then now we're gonna go back to our second constraint right there. so here they're saying the tracks should be exceed the cars the tracks which is demand should exceed or or should be at least 27 which means they should be greater or equals to 27 right and then now so since that like then again like since they didn't mention anything here about the the car right the constraint is strictly focused on the track right so they're saying that right should be greater or equals to or at least 27 right and then now we after we're done with those constraints we formulate our non-negative constraints right so similarly to there's one here and then there's one here so this is similar to okay i found like i just thought of a better way to so this is one plus plus zero x2 right and then obviously this is gonna fall off right so that's why we don't we just leave this always leave it as at zero 
is zero right so now an negative constraint to come back for so the car should be cars produce should be greater or equals to zero right so you want to come back here and put one and the cars produce should be greater or equals to zero right and then the tracks as well so these are you want to leave with your non negative constraint for the car non negative constraint for the track right and then so since on track is x2 when i say one this side and then it should be greater or equals to zero right so now you can confirm that your constraints are correct on this side right and then now after you are done you just click on solve so you can press solve here or solve here right and then now you get a whole different range of of solutions right but what, what i want us to focus on first it's or the two things i want you to focus on the most right it's our so here like it's just like in a sense like showing the processes on how it achieved the solution right but i want us to focus on that like, it's number one and number six mainly right so our number let's start with number six right so if you look at our number six we get a linear programming graph right so i'm sure you are familiar with this right so the shaded spot the blue shaded spot it indicates our feasible region right that's where our solution exists right and then here it these lines indicates the graphs for that are formulated from you writing the constraint right and then now back to our linear programming results table right this is where we can properly identify our solution right so now we can say like therefore our co to to ensure that like the ford plant makes the maximum profit right we can suggest now that they can produce 90 cars and 60 cars so 90 cars and 60 trucks in a so this is our solution 90 they should produce 90 trucks right and then they should also produce 60 cars in a month like which will result in them making a maximum profit of 10 million 10 million 500 is it 10 million yeah 10 million 500 thousand right or 10.5 million right so that's how you conclude right so you can so you look at how much of x1 or the cars you should produce how much of x2 you should produce and how much profit will it result in right and then you are done right so one thing that you can also verify to check this you can also verify against your graph right so your graph here so they did an extrapolation like of the solution so a solution so this side to here right so as you can see here it's nine and then okay they didn't indicate this point here right but you can see like it's it's in your feasible region right so that's how you formulate a linear programming model using qm right so yeah thank you